In this two-part series of videos, we're going to look at the relationships that exist between the volume, pressure, temperature, and number of moles of gases in the form of four mathematical relationships that we call the gas laws. The first of which being Boyle's Law, which examines the relationship between the pressure exerted on a gas and the volume that that gas occupies as a consequence. If we increase this pressure, meaning that if we exert more force on, the, on a gas, this force is going to push gas molecules closer together so that the volume that gas particles occupy is going to decrease. This means that gas pressure and, or pressure on gases and gas volume have an inverse relationship with one another, which we can show by saying that the pressure of a gas multiplied by the volume of a gas is equal to what we call K, which is what we call a proportionality constant. And what a proportionality constant shows is that no matter what the pressure is of a gas, the volume is always going to change inversely relative to what this constant is, regardless of what the pressure and volume are. There is a more practical way to write out this formula in which we say that the pressure and volume of a gas at a certain set of conditions when multiplied together are going to be equal to the pressure and volume of, of uh, the same gas multiplied together under different conditions. Simply put, no matter what the pressure or volume is, the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas is constant because of this inverse relationship with each other. We can use this in order to calculate the volume of gases depending on pressure changes that are shown. So in this case, we're comparing the volume of an air bubble that forms underwater depending on how great the water pressure is that is exerted on that bubble. So if we write out our formula like this, we can say that the pressure at condition 1, 2.25 atmospheres multiplied by the volume of our gas is going to equal to the pressure at the second conditions multiplied by the volume of our gas, which is what we want to figure out. Now, I've left some space here because we know that atmospheric pressure is not the standard unit for measuring pressure, so we can do a quick conversion here. We know that one atmosphere of gas pressure is equal to 101.3 kilopascals, and we can do this unit conversion here for atmospheres. I'm not going to write this out because the calculation actually works itself out nicely. And this is our gas pressure, which we can multiply by our volume, 0.75 liters, and this would be equal to the new atmospheric pressure, which again, we're going to convert to kilopascals like this by multiplying atmospheric pressure by kilo, by 101.3 kilopascals. And of course, the variable that we want to find is V2. We don't know what the volume at this new pressure is going to be. So if we use some simple algebra and isolate V2, that means that V2 is going to be equal to everything on the other side of the equation. So 101.3 kilopascals per one atmosphere times 2.25 atmospheres times our volume 0 0.75 liters and then we're going to divide by 1.03 atmospheres which is the new pressure that we're looking for but we see we need to convert that into kilopascals so that's why this conversion factor is here and here, if we look at all of our units, we see that 101.3 kilopascals is in the numerator and the denominator, meaning that we can cancel it out like this. So if you take your atmospheric pressures in atmospheres and divide them, it all works out. And if we check all of our units to see that they cancel, we see that the only unit we have left is liters, which is exactly 
what we're looking for here. So here, we've simply used the relationship that exists between gas pressure and volume in order to calculate what the volume would be assuming that we change the pressure. So if we put this into our calculator, this should come to approximately 1.64 liters and this number is is basically what we would expect because as the pressure decreases we see that there's a decrease in pressure as the air bubble gets to a higher level in the water that means that our volume is going to increase and that's exactly what we see our second gas law examines the relationship between volume and temperature. This is what we call Charles Law. Now, as we know, temperature is a representation about how much kinetic energy given particles have at a certain temperature, meaning that if we increase temperature, we're going to increase the kinetic energy of the gas molecules, meaning that the gas molecules are going to move faster. So, as temperature increases, that means that particle speed is going to increase and therefore the particles of gas are going to move farther away from each other and if the particles move farther away because they're moving faster, that means that the volume that they're going to be occupying is going to to increase as well. So unlike with gas pressure, we see that volume and temperature actually have a direct relationship, meaning that as one increases, the other is going to proportionally increase as well. And we can write out this law similar to Boyle's law by showing that a relationship exists where the volume divided by the temperature at a certain condition, this ratio is going to be equal to the volume divided by the temperature at a different set of conditions, and this is what allows us to find the unknown temperature or unknown volume, assuming that we have all of the other data. Now, the first thing that you'll note is that our temperatures are listed out in Celsius, and this is actually a problem because pretty much all gas calculations that involve temperature require us to convert the temperature into Kelvin. So if we want to remember how to do this, if we remember that zero degrees Celsius is equal to 273 degrees Kelvin, that means that all we need to do to find these temperatures in Kelvin is simply to add 273. So if we do that now, 40.0 degrees Celsius plus 273 comes to, I believe, is 313, check my arithmetic, and 75 plus 273 degrees Kelvin comes out to 348 Kelvin. So now that that's out of the way, we can use Charles' law in order to determine the unknown volume of a balloon when we change the temperature of the gas within that balloon. So we know there's a direct relationship, so we'll say that V1 is equal to 2.32 uh, liters, and the temperature that that exists at is at 313 degrees Kelvin, and we know this proportion is equal to our volume 2, which is our unknown, divided by the temperature at our second condition, 348 degrees Kelvin, which means if we want to isolate V2, all we need to do is multiply both sides by 348 Kelvin, which means that we would get 348 Kelvin times 2.32 liters divided by 313 degrees Kelvin, and if we check our units, we see that degrees Kelvin cancels itself out, leaving us with liters, which is exactly what we want. And if we put this into our calculator, you should get that our volume 2 comes to 2.58 liters and this is pretty much what we'd expect because as we know if we increase temperature our volume is also going to increase compared to the original volume which is what we have seen. In the next video we're going to examine the other two gas laws that being Avogadro's law and Gay-Lussac's law which describe the relationship between 
or further relationships between number of moles, temperature, and volume of gases.